not gonna like it. Tell me. I got tattoos. I'm not there. You are? Yeah. Oh. Is it that serious? Can I do you know your son has one? No. That's me? <laughs> uh oh. I told your mom you have a tattoo. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 13, Episode 2. And for me, this episode was very much like a filler. It, was, it wasn't it was too much. I feel like it helped move the story along. But y'all, like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah, let me check my, check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out my flame and lips. You want to play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, want it, securing the bag. All right, so we open up with Dorit. She's hosting like a picnic. And I feel like, I thought it was like gonna be like a group event because it was very lavish. It was really nice. It's in the middle of Beverly Hills. So I'm thinking it's gonna be like all the girls. No, it was just her and Erica. I'm just like, girl, you did all this for just you and Erica? I guess. But you know, they basically piggyback on the conversation that they had earlier at the retreat about how Dorit felt hurt by Erica, bringing up her mayor saying that it's the next to go to Splitsville. And I was a little bit taken aback. And I know ultimately you did, but it felt like I had to ask you for it. I did the wrong thing. So Erica's just like, you know, I understand and I get that. Doris like, yeah, I would have thought that you would live with an apology, but you did it. So yeah, Erica's like, look, I'm a showman. That's just what I do. I thought it would just, you know, give the people what they wanted, but you're absolutely right. I apologize. I care about you very much. It was um, undefendable. And you know, she took full responsibility of the situation, which is great, right? I apologize and I will do whatever I can to make this right because you mean, a lot to me like girl so where was this girl at beforehand this is what i needed at the retreat but you know it is what it is um Dorit basically talks about you know her disconnection with her husband and her feeling with her anxiety PST, ptsd and how she feels like he didn't really support her during that or she doesn't feel safe right and she was like the comment that erica made just made everything just worse <laughs> Dorit brings up you know um, she when did we get money out of the bank um, and she had it in the shopping cart this all happened 14 months um, after the home invasion during Christmas time she got like 10k 10 stacks out for like Christmas giving people out money right I'm just thinking to myself I'm just like girl what bank did you go to that will give you 10 stacks and you tell me you put it in a shopping cart in your bag but I'm just like girl this is Beverly Hills we get it um, she said she went, went, um, turned away, came back, her bag was gone, the money was gone, and they looked at the security camera and basically three men was following behind her the whole time. And I'm not blaming her for the situation happening, but I feel like there should have been some type of situational awareness. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, if I was to read, I would just hire a bodyguard because if like this was like true, her true feelings and not just for TV, then I wouldn't feel safe. So I get how all this stuff can be triggering, right? So we see Garcelle FaceTime Sutton and you know, they're planning a Las Vegas um, birthday weekend for Crystal for her 40th birthday. To be honest, after how they left off things, I wouldn't be planning Crystal, nothing. Girl, like you threw Garcelle under the bus, you and Sutton steady going head to head, and y'all always falling out over something. So I'm just like, girl, mm, I don't know. Sutton um has a um, matchmaker come over, Alexandra, and she's like, look, I'm a famous matchmaker in um Beverly Hills, so I'm trying to help you find out me. She's trying to get her three suitors by the next time she comes see her. Sutton's just like, look, at the end of the day, um. I don't like meeting people on social media. Bumble's not working. Um, the, what the Araya's not working, and I get her thing because like I like meeting people at the, out, out in person, like at an event or out at the club. Like somebody, the mo more more of the guys that I've met have been literally out and about. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Blah blah blah, shooting shit, and then all of a sudden they ask for my number, I ask for their number, we hang out, things lead to another thing. Boom, boom, boom. So she just feels like she's like a one and done type of girl. So she's just like, how do I, you know, keep them and you know, have that lasting relationship? But she also does feel like, she also does feel like, you know, she want to dominate the relationship because she's like, no man is going to ever dominate me again. You don't want to let him lead. Okay. Let a man lead. I'm just like, I don't blame her in a sense. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult for her to find a man that wants to play second or backfield, like play the background to her. But I mean, if that's what she wants, then hopefully she can find somebody that could do that, right? 
So we see Crystal, she's out at lunch with her husband and her brother. Basically, we already know from last year, her brother is like a famous pop star in China. He's over here doing the damn thing. But they get more into like his breakup with, I guess, his ex fiance and they broke up like in the midst of covid she couldn't come over here he came over here and then just like crystal basically taking on the the weight of their breakup like she said i feel like he thinks it's my fault and i'm like girl at the end of the day you cannot put yourself in the middle of someone else's relationship and or to put on the weight if they could not communicate and make it through their relationship that's on them so i just want crystal to take a seat step back and not put so much on it only if she was actively like she's a horrible hey her out she's a bitch she's a, doing that but i doubt crystal is that girl to be doing that anyway we never know but child like put some of the blame on your brother and the fiance because that's their relationship not yours so, you know, Kyle's over here picking up Dorit and, you know, Dorit thinks they're going out for lunch. It's just really cute. But, you know, PK's playing that surprise, like a, uh, was it, Pretty Woman type, trying to um, redo the whole Pretty Woman movie for, you know, Dorit. So, on the way, Dorit's just like, okay, so what's going on with you and Mauricio? What do you think this video about? He's really stressed at work. Because, you know, it just seems like y'all have been kind of disconnected. I don't see you posting on social media. And also, you know, we always go on double dates. But, girl, like, y'all haven't been hanging out. What's going on? So, Kyle was just like, yeah, you know, he's been really busy with the agency. He's opening up all this stuff. You know, I've been busy. It's just that we really don't have a lot of time with each other. And don't get me wrong i just feel like kyle said like you know she never went through like a lot of downs in her relationship she always been on like a high note in her relationship so it's sad to see that the first time that you face at, um adversity within your relationship i don't know if this is the first time but i'm just assuming but the first time you face adversity in your relationship y'all actually separate oh, we go on vacations we go to their house we haven't seen kyle and mo as a couple in a very long time and that just goes to show like you know if everything is good, that's great. But it's like, how strong is your relationship when you are down? And it's like what PK and Doris going through right now. Like they're going through a, a low point, but if they can make it through that, I think it will make them stronger, right? Um, I, I can understand Doris, you know, concerns, and you know, she's just like at the end of the day, you know, I want y'all to be good. But Kyle's over here saying, no, we're good. I just need a little bit more freedom. I just want to do my own thing. And she's like, okay, so you want to do your own thing. So you want to do your own thing. But also not being around your husband, I'm confused. Away from your husband? I think away from everything. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. Kyle saying, no, everything is good. But Doree, she's calling bullshit. And she's just like, look, I'm not going to push. If there's any question you want me to ask, just let me know. But it does seem kind of fishy. Garcelle, she um, basically goes over to Sutton's house. They're having like, you know, a little lunch, talking, kiki, and you know. But, you know, Sutton talks about the whole matchmaker situation. She's just like, look. I never want to be in a position when I'm dating a man that I feel like he has something over me, holding something over me, controls me. I don't want to be in that headspace ever again. So I want to make sure that I have the freedom to do what I want to do within a relationship, which I totally understand, especially being in her situation. I slowly regained my power. So now I'm holding on to it really tight. I get that. You know, enough about me. Tell me about you. Garcelle, then they segue to Garcelle and she talks about her son, Jack. Um, one, she feels like, you know, she missed something like that. The way that he's feeling, she's like, how can I not see it? Did I not give him, you know, the freedom that he wants? And is it that he's just being hard headed or a brat? Like she just feels like she's a, like a failure because one, he's over here talking about like, look, at the end of the day, I'm gonna go live with my dad. And she's just like, you know, every time I try to discipline, it's not really so reciprocated. I talked to his dad. He don't really want to discipline like that. So she just, you know, in a rock and a hard place. <laughs> they are. I know, but I just feel like I failed. I feel like I failed. You know, he asked to go live with his dad. Right. I know with my dad, um, I was staying with my mom for the majority of my childhood. But towards high school, I went to go live with my dad because I wanted to spend more time with my dad. And that was just a more personal thing with me. Like, I'm about to graduate, better be on my own. So I wanted to spend that more time with my dad. So Dorit and Kyle go to the hotel and they're over here. She tells her, like, look, we're trying to create pretty woman. Actually, she's trying to give her hints and Dorit's just like scatterbrained, like, girl. So she finally realizes she's like, pretty woman. She said, 
She said, there's not a lot of fruit. I don't got everything I want. I don't got the dress. She started nitpicking. And I'm just like, at some point, it's a surprise. And she's like, I'm a control freak. I want to have like all the control. There's so much going on. What about my kids? What? She started going on this diatribe about stuff that's not going the way that she wanted to go. So, you know, I understand her kid's situation. Like, okay, what's going on with my kids? I told my kids I'll be back at a certain time. So I get that. But it's still coming off as she's being ungrateful. And I get that she's a control freak but sometimes you have to let go and to be honest you cannot tell me that Dorit has all this control within her relationship when her husband seemed like he is dominating that whole relationship period <laughs> um but you know she calls her husband Kyle calls first but then she calls her husband and then her kids answer they're just like look girl stop stressing <laughs> <laughs> so she's like that calmed me that calmed my soul so it was cute um, you know, she goes to dinner um, with um, PK. She looks stunning. Um, he gifts her with a five million dollar diamond necklace. I noticed that this episode they've been putting the price tags up here. I'm like, they got money, and I want to figure out what does PK do again, because I don't know. Because I've been seeing like like with Dr. Nicole's husband, I get that he's a lawyer, real estate, all this. The only one that makes sense for them to have this ignorant amount of money is Mauricio. You hear him talk, we got agencies here, 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 here. That makes sense. I can see the cash flow. But everybody else, I don't get it. Because we know, what does the redo? Stay at home. Click a check. I want my 20%, bitch. Right. But you know, they go into like this, um, the suite and you know, um, Berlin is in there. They're singing to them. Dorit's crying, they're dancing. It's real cute. They sit down for dinner and then, you know, PK basically tells her like, look, I'm just not planning stuff for you because at the end of the day, uh -uh. like you nitpicking you talk about this you talk about the dresses like i had stuff lined out for you i know how you are so i try to make sure i got ahead of everything but you just difficult and she don't love surprises you know what a detail oriented person that's control you know you think that this She's like no you got to realize that i want to keep control you're not understanding my anxiety my ptsd and I understand that she has that and I feel like PK has to understand that she does have these triggers towards her situation that happened, like the break in and then the money being taken from her. I get that. But also I have to look on the other side is that you can't keep using that as an excuse to do really do whatever you want and not give him the grace to do stuff for you. So it's just like, I don't like the fact that, you know, she's trying to use that as a caveat to well the reason why i did this is because my anxiety you can't keep doing that because that's a manipulation tactic right so that's the only thing with that situation that i don't like but you know i do feel like they both have to meet in the middle somewhere um so we're at kyle's house this is at the end of the episode and you know she see mariso she walk in the kitchen he's like hey love bug can we drop it right um, so all the guests are arriving and you know, they're celebrating their daughter Portia's birthday. She's turning 15. Mauricio's mama walk in. She's like, Kyle. Kyle's like, yeah. She's like, um, what's going on with all these rumors about you and Mariso separating? <coughs> Every time I open Google, there was like something about you guys separating, divorcing, whatever. It got to a point in which I called Mauricio. I sent him a text. And you know, they start talking and Kyle's just like, girl. She was like, why do people, she said, when I don't have my wedding ring on now, and that's when people want to believe these rumors and stuff. To be honest, I'm gonna get to it, hold on. They talk about the whole tattoo situation too. So Kyle was like, oh yeah, you know, um, I, she's always his mom, like, I have a tattoo. And he was like, uh, the mom was like, okay, you have tattoos, I, um, that's fine, whatever. She was like, yeah, I know the girl's gonna get tattoos. And she was like, you know, your son has tattoos. And the mom like laughed it off, but you know, Got one. Yeah. Like, and I do you know your son has one? No. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Maybe he does. I don't know. I'm kidding. Did you see that big of a deal? And then she went to Mauricio and the kids. She was like, I told your mom you had a tattoo. And he's like, what? And he got pissed and he like walked off. And the kids are just like. 
So then she goes into like the um kit like the dining room where all the guests are at. She's like, and they're talking about it. He's like, look, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like she was like, I didn't tell her. It was like a little jokey thing. It was nothing serious. I told her that you did, but then I was like, didn't. He was like, at the end of the day, that's not the point. The point is like you don't like something like that. You don't tell my parents for me. Let me have the opportunity to do that. Whatever. I don't want to talk about that right now. Well, I just want you to know that she wasn't even out there. So then your dad. It's not about that. I, it's mine to talk about. Which I totally understand. But here is my point with all of this, right? Why do I feel like it is kind of, they playing it in our face? Because the whole cheating out allegations, her not wearing her wedding ring, um, him over here telling her she can't get any more tattoos, her telling his mom that he has tattoos, all does not seem like that's what's making them break up. I feel like there's something deeper that they are trying to cover up and push this in our face i don't know what it is but it seems kind of facetious at this point because i'm just like it'll be annoying but i don't think this is what's making y'all relationship go down south and on top of that mauricio you're a grown-ass adult so i doubt that your parents are going to whoop you for having a tattoo <laughs> right but let me know what you guys think because i do feel like kyle be playing in people's face um Hopefully the relationship can last. I know they're officially separated at this point, but you never know. They're still married. They can come back together and figure something out. So we'll see y'all. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Brian Keith, LG, Black Pete. Bet you didn't know we the Holy Trinity. Now let the God stop a dollar break your head.